Okay, today we're going to be reviewing Gorzag uh, La Pro. I'm just going to call him Gorzag <laughs> La Pro. You make a lot of mistakes in these games against Consume, and I really want to teach other players how to avoid them. You're still a really good player, Gorzag. Uh, and this right here kind of showcases it. See how he puts the Blue Mountain Commandos into the melee row? Since you do not have Zoltan um, Shive to reorder them afterwards, putting them onto the melee row or the siege row makes it a higher chance they'll run into the range row so that you can get a buff onto them with Teruvial. However, the biggest mistake you did is that you're just doing the combo without really considering who you're playing against. You're kind of playing on your side of the board, ignoring your opponent. Had I been playing this, I would have put the Hawker Smuggler onto the board immediately. Because I'm not playing Isengrim this round. So I don't... The Blue Mountain Commandos, I need another elf, and the Hawker Smuggler counts. This Hawker Smuggler would have been huge had you played it first. Now you have your Bamboozle set up. Another thing that I think you do is that you overcommit to the Bamboozle. Now the Frightener tells you one really important piece of information, and I think this is one thing that also highlights how good a player you are. And that is that your opponent has a Geralt Igni. Knowing your opponent has a Geralt Igni will allow you to understand what's in their hand in the final round and order your cards correctly. So you tie the round. It was very scary. You tie the round. Uh, the Bamboozle was successful. I'm not sure if I would have personally pushed out the card you did. But, yeah. Well, you had to push out Morin, excuse me, for uh, Isengrim. Yeah, it was unfortunate. It's also good that your opponent um, ate the Dragoon there with his uh, Regis Higher Vampire because it guarantees that you pull the Elven Mercenary. Yeah, I would also play the uh, Shiro here and not convert anything. You know you're going to get the Elven Mercenary when you uh, use the first light, which is good. You get another excellent uh, Shroom target here. To decide to play steal your Teruvial, which is obvious here. Uh, yeah, that was excellent ordering there, recognizing that you still had another Elven Mercenary to pull with the first light. Now, here is the thing that you know because they have a Geralt Igni, you can safely play the Morin down, knowing that it's not going to trigger on the Igni, but it's going to trigger on the Grave Hat. And your Hawker support that you've been buffing is safe. So here your opponent pulls out the Grave Hag, gets killed by Morin, and your uh, 21 strength Hawker support survived. Excellent ordering. Good job. I also want to point out that the Morin is a great way when you don't have card advantage to hit the Grave Hag. This is our second game, another game against Consume. I wanted to contrast some of the stuff and repeat what I said about the mistakes you've been making with the deck, okay? So first things first, you open up again with the Blue Mountain Commandos instead of a Dragoon or a Hawker Smuggler. You should have opened up with the Dragoon. You want your 
turn by turn cards getting onto the board immediately. Now the second mistake you, you made is instead of lacerating his eggs, you played the dragoon. Uh, you should have played the dragoon first and then lacerated his eggs. Now you have this Ran Warrior that's getting huge value by consuming eggs. Those eggs are worth a lot. You don't want them on the board. It's the only way your opponent wins round one. Now you are supposed to use your shrooms to get rid of the Neckers. That's true. And you have a pretty decent last raid onto the Siege Row. But what I would do right here is I would have used the Zoltan, before you used it already, to move his Vran Warriors all onto one row. So let's let's pause this here. Let's go into another dimension. Okay, now imagine you had done it in the ordering I suggested. Dragoon, Lacerate, Shrooms to remove the Necker, uh, Blue Mountain Commando. I think that would have been a much more effective opener. Now, your opponent might have played different cards in different order there. They might have played the crones and stuff like that. But the main focus here is I want you to think about using your spells more effectively. Most notably using that last rate to remove the eggs. Now, fast forwarding a bit, let's imagine that your opponent has two brand warriors on the board and you still haven't played your Zoltan Shive yet. Because you really don't need to play Zoltan until you're ready to pass. So they play they have these two huge Rand warriors on the board you move them all uh, move them to the same row and have them eat each other go ahead and eat the other one wow good job Rand warrior then your opponent either is stuck with oh do I protect the the points here by consuming it with my leader effectively only doing five points worth of value by consuming it because there are no Arrakis behemoths on the board or do I just let my opponent use shrooms to reduce it down to nothing. You, you give them that kind of hard decision. Now, I actually think it's really important to do that because it also weakens their Neckers. Their Neckers are not getting the value of two brand warriors consuming stuff on the board. And you're making your opponent make difficult decisions with their leader. You can also use the brand warrior to consume an Arrakis behemoth so it doesn't spawn little Arrakises by moving the you know the Ran Warrior and the Rockets Behemoth onto the same row. Since the ordering in which you do that, you can actually force your opponent to not be able to react to the fact that you just made them consume an Arrakis Behemoth. I think these are things that you need to consider when using Zoltan Shivik. Don't just focus on the value side on your side of the board. Think about what your opponent's doing and execute. Now we'll return to the actual game. Okay, your opponent just plays a Frightener, meaning that they probably are going to Geralt ignore you. Frightener kind of just communicates that. Yes, and he messes up your Bamboozle. You no longer have the Elves necessary. This would have been an excellent snip situation to use that last rate. Would have gotten you a lot more value than you are going to get later in the game. Now, because you decided to pass, you also are not going to be able to deal with the Grave Hag. I personally would have played out round one a little longer, at least forced out the Illyrian, thin, it, thin her from your deck. However, this is fine too, but it just means you won't be able to deal with the Grave Hag and your opponent gets to do this kind of shenanigans on you. They're going to get an excellent Necker here. One of the, another reason why you want to play out round one is so that you can prevent him from using his leader ability for value later. Now he's going to get a lot of value through the Arrakis Behemoth and the Necker because he still has his leader ability available. Your opponent plays the Old Spear Tip. You respond to it correctly by playing the Sheldon Skaggs. Good job. On point for that. Now he's going to get a huge value uh, leader ability. Now, it's important to note how well you're keeping up with somebody who pretty much has the perfect hand for round three as a monster player. Now, here you're going to see the, uh, the problem of using Lacerate. Like, you only got six points out of that. Sure, if they had played Grave Hag sooner, you would have been able to deal with it. Now, another thing that could have happened is you could have drawn into Isengrim. 
and that would have allowed you to kill off the Grave Hag and win that game. It was just bad luck on draws for you at that last point, but you probably still could have won if you'd played the round one correctly. Good job. Regardless, that was still, that was super close. We're now going to look at your final game. It's up against a Radovid player. So here I'm going to look a little bit at your mulligans. Saskia isn't a mulligan you do first. Why? Because she doesn't blacklist as much. You, sh the, you should have done the first light. I might have also gotten rid of the Hawker Smuggler. Why? Because the Hawker Smuggler is not usually good against Radovid if they're playing a very control-centric style. The Dragoon is probably worth playing first. You could also play the Hawker Smuggler. It's also fine. It might eat some removal instead of your Dragoon. Now you have a pretty excellent Hawker Smuggler but because you know that they're going to play their Kodani Sergeants. Instead you decide to play uh, Blue Mountain Commando, which is maybe poor. Who knows? Maybe waited a little longer before using it. Now he's going to get do a lot more removal. He gets rid of all your guys. Like you, Once you saw the machines, yeah. The Hawker Smuggler would have been so much better because it would have been so much more uneven. Or I would get more Dragoons onto the board, waiting for the, one of them to get buffed, and then play them so that they're all uneven for his uh, machines. But you're getting excellent lacerates off, and you're still way ahead despite the fact that your opponent's gotten a lot of value. He decides to use his leader ability, which doesn't make sense to me. Like, you're still 20 points ahead of him, and you have two Dragoons in your hand. He's going to have to go way below just to win this round. Yeah. I don't understand what your opponent was tr doing there. They should have passed instead of used their leader ability. Uh, maybe because they have a Siri and a Thaler. Who knows? I might have opened up with Dragoon here. but I mean uh, Hawker support instead of the Dragoon. You're giving him removal options. But it doesn't seem to matter because he had the Azur's Thunder and the uh, Margarita. Again, the Hawker Smuggler comes in, but it would have been much better earlier. Good Morin there. Yeah, great value. Oh man, I'm so jealous of your premiums. Gosh. Hawker Smuggler's proving resilient to your opponent's uh, decisions. Now you have only gold cards in your hand, which is probably best against a uh, Radovid player, because Radovid players tend to have so much control in the final round that it's all you just want to have gold cards on the field so they can't hit you. Eh. It's a lot of risk, and I congratulate you for not mulliganing out the... Um, Hawker support, probably. Though I might not have turned him into a scorch. Since what are you going to scorch? Your opponent forfeits, so it doesn't matter. Good job. That was excellently played, though. I think your opponent made a lot of mistakes. Radovid's usually a really hard matchup. The important thing there is that you saved all your gold cards for the inevitable, like, stupid round at the end, where it's just control effect after control effect after control effect and if you have a board of gold cards what is he going to use his control cards on what is he going to use his weather on what is he going to use his epidemics on nothing so you effectively won that round good job